This is a uh, carbon fiber nylon. Welcome back, folks. It's another day in the print farm today. We've got a lot of stuff going on. Got some Etsy orders to ship out and we've got a lot of product to restock on. I've got very little of those pencil sharpener holders that I sell typically during the back to school season. So I have been getting some orders for them and I'd like to have more colors in stock because right now I think the only ones I have in stock on the Etsy page are the ones that I have here, which is not very many. I'm gonna get some purple and yellow loaded up into two of these A1 minis behind me that aren't currently doing anything. I think I'm gonna slice three models for each of the printers. So that way we can knock out a bunch of these at a time. All right, so I've got these loaded up into Orca Slicer now. I did have Bamboo Studio open. I had everything ready to go. It was all sliced, sent over to the machine. And then I noticed Bamboo does not allow you to do mouse ear brims. Come on, man. I had a viewer in the comments below on my A1 mini video where I talked about how the ironing wasn't very good. He recommended 25 and 25% for the ironing speed. I, uh, since I've started doing that, it works awesome. So I will put your name up here on the screen with your comment. Uh, just to give you a credit, I appreciate your suggestion. I've been using it on my A1 Mini ever since then. Send this over to A1 Mini 2. We've got purple in that machine. All right, and I don't have enough filament inside of A1 Mini 3 with the yellow to slice three of them. I'm going to use our Super Tac profile. I'm just using the smooth high temp plate for the uh, Bamboo Super Tac. I have found the best luck with that uh, when using Orca Slicer anyway. Send this over to three. All right, so we've just got the yellow started printing over on A1 Mini 3. A1 Mini 2 had some sort of SD card reader, so I had to shut it off and resend the print. That is getting loaded up now. A1 Mini 1 printing out some dumbbell ends. Currently working on a little bit more of a detailed video on how I send these things out to Amazon, get them all packed up, and a little bit more of a behind the scenes into Amazon Seller Central, so be on the lookout for that one. Had an order of four sets of these the other day, so we've got P1P loaded up with printing them and A1 Mini with the AMS as well. All that said, I've got a bunch of Etsy orders to get packed up and shipped out from the last couple of days, so let's get over to the bench and get those picked out. All right, I'm just going to get the shipping labels for these next seven items printed out. I've already got nine, nine or ten and I just finished printing, so let's see. We've got a floppy disk coaster. We can fit that in those. When I first started out, I was entering in all of the sizes manually each time, but as I realized I was gonna be shipping more and more of the same sized items, I mean, given the size of a 3D print bed, and most of them are gonna be fairly small anyways, unless you're technicals, and then you're printing things that uh, you need freight to pick up. I do like to print the packing slips as well as the shipping labels at the same time. So I will get these printed out and we will pull them off and go pick our items out. All right. What I like to do is separate my packing slips from the shipping labels. And then I go and lay out all the shipping labels on the table. And I'll put some packing slips back on top of them. It just makes it easier that way. So I don't have all four sets of the fingerprint coasters right now. I'm getting some printed out on the A1 Mini and the P1P. So when I have those all uh, finished up, she ordered 16 of them. So when those are all finished up, then I'll get those packaged up. The lime green pencil. So I do need to get some glue on this guy. I'm all out of the activator spray that I normally use. Waiting on that to come in. Just gonna have to hold it a little longer. All right, so I'm just gonna let this sit for a second. I'm gonna put some tape over it just to keep it pulled down. Set that off to the side so it can dry. Let's get some packing materials. All right. Those keychains can go in these cellophane bags. And if you're interested in picking up any of the packing materials that I'm using today, these are 10 by six bubble mailers. These are eight by fours. 
and 11 and a half by 16s that I typically fold in half like this when I'm packing up things like the dumbbells. If you want to pick some up for yourself, there are links to all of the Amazon listings down in the description below. And the last time I was over at the post office, I asked them if I could grab a couple of those, you know, bins that they have there just to make it easier on myself. And they gave me some, so I'm going to go grab those. So yeah, if you go to your post office and ask them for these little bins here, they should be able to give them to you. So let's get that in there. All right, now that all that stuff is packed up and ready to go out tomorrow, I have been toying with the idea recently of doing some merch, you know, just simple stuff like the Mountain Maker hat that I have. So I've been testing one company in particular, Printful, and that's where I got my hat through and my first sweatshirt, and those came out all right. So I decided to come in and order a couple more, some hoodies and a, you know, regular zip-up sweatshirt. First one looks all right. A little close there, but not bad. Then the second one here... Maybe we can zoom in and get a better view of that. You can see the bleeding around the edges of the yellow. I mean, from a distance, you're not really going to see it. So I wasn't overly concerned about this for my own personal use. But if I'm going to be selling them, uh, I definitely want it to be something that looks better than that. And now here's the same file, but on a darker shirt somehow. And so I emailed Printful's customer support and said, look, is there a particular you know, reason it came out like this? Did it not go through quality control before it left? Because this one comes out okay. It's obviously got a little bit of bleeding, but this one, you don't see any bleeding around the outside. So to me, it doesn't seem like it's a design or file issue, just like an overall quality control issue. So they did reach out. They said they've optimized the file and they're going to mail me uh, two new ones for the ones that were messed up. So I'm curious to get your thoughts on it. If you're a maker or somebody in general who uses like a, a print-on-demand service for your merchandise, let me know who you use and who you've had the best luck with so far because uh, I don't think I could use Printful, you know, to be selling stuff to you guys. For me, it's it's fine and, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, I don't want customers' orders or viewers' orders to get all messed up too. But I was testing out over on this Creality... Falcon 2 Pro, the idea of laser engraving my build plates. Apparently, the spettings that I had for this were much too high. I was going for more of a, a center look right there, but as you can see, it kind of warped the build plate a little bit. And uh, PEI is not exactly the greatest thing to be breathing in. So I'm going to be moving this thing out into the third bay. It's a laser, not a 3D printer. This doesn't really need to be climate controlled per se. The only thing that won't appreciate it is the computer that gets plugged into it. But for testing purposes, until I can get an exhaust fan, it is going to get moved out into the other bay. So right now the build plate is not currently on this. I'm still deciding if I want to keep this set up the way that it is, or if I want to maybe reorganize this a little bit better, because I do plan on getting more of these adventure machines in. Like when the 85X comes in, I'm going to end up moving this down to put the 85X here so it's easier to load in the filament from this. Probably going to want to move one of the other A1 minis up top. That doesn't really leave much room for the Creality up here. Maybe the Creality can find a home over here somewhere. I've already moved the Ender 3 Max Neo over there, so I may end up just putting both of them somewhere over here, maybe down on the bottom shelf. So they can still print when I need them to print, uh, but they're not you know, directly in my way. As you may have seen, we are 75% complete, about an hour and 37 minutes left on these guys. Looking really clean being printed on that super tax. It doesn't allow for any layers shifting. It doesn't let the piece lift up. Uh, this one's doing pretty good too, though. Got about five hours and one minute left for these guys. And this guy... Just finished up some more of these fingerprint coasters. Like I mentioned before, I had an order of 16 of these. So I've been using the uh, multicolor A1 Mini and the P1P to get these printed out. P1P does five at a time. A1 Mini, unfortunately, can only fit two at a time with this size. So I should have enough of these fingerprint coasters now to get that last order packed up. Uh, she ordered 16 of them. So 
there's a little bit of a delay in getting them printed out. But I'm going to continue printing these on and on so we can build up kind of a stock. I'm going to do the same with the barbell coasters as well. And speaking of the P1P, this one's got about 23 minutes left. So these are finished and then I'm going to run another batch of them. So one of the other things today I wanted to test out is printing with some carbon fiber reinforced filaments, particularly carbon fiber PET G from Flashforge. I've got some loaded up right now inside of the S4 filler dryer. It's been drying for a day or two, uh, but that is fed into the Adventure 5M Pro from Flashforge. You can see in this side, I've also got some of the Midnight Blue PTG CF. Interested to see how this stuff comes out because the carbon fiber filaments, this is a carbon fiber nylon and they're, they're really durable. They've got a really nice sheen to it and you really don't see the layer lines at all. So I'm curious to see how the PETG performs and is it actually stronger than the regular PETG? I'm going to be testing that out too in a future video. All right. Let's go get these off the build plate. All right, we've got another batch of these running seven or so hours, and that should be finished up. A1 Mini is just doing its first color change over to the white. So we're printing now with the carbon fiber pet G from Flashforge on the Adventure 5M Pro. This is a mount for a tripod for my iPad, essentially. So this would be the part that goes into the base of the tripod, and then that is a swivel arm. So far, the print quality is as you would expect with anything carbon fiber reinforced. And I am using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. This is being sliced at a 0.2 millimeter layer height just to give the threads the best chance of success. So far, so good though. There's three other parts I got to print out after this one. I just wanted to see how the uh, carbon fiber PETG initially performed with Flashforge's stock settings. And we've finished up on the first set of these pencil sharpener holders. The purple ones still have about 48 minutes to go. And then I can set these up to do another round. I'm going to get the filament changed out here on A1 Mini 3 though, so I can print out more of these yellow. Just pulling off the little remnants of the mouse ears here. Thankfully, they are not too difficult to get off. As long as you can get your little thing underneath it. There you go. This is typically why I end up with so many rolls that are about 100 grams. Is this file is, for two of these, is just under 300 grams. So I can run it three times, get six of them out of a spool. But then I'm usually left with about 100 grams left over, or just over. <laughs> All right, let's rerun these, get another two of them going. And the quality on this, I don't know how well the camera is going to pick it up, but so much better with that 25% uh, flow rate and 25 millimeters per second for the ironing on the A1 Mini. And the Flash 4 is just finished. Well, you know what? That's not threads in there. That's just a open through hole. Okay. Even better. I wish you could feel this piece. The carbon fiber is just so cool. Coming from somebody who's not really used carbon fiber reinforced filaments very often, 
This is an awesome color. I'm going to get the rest of these parts for this uh, iPad tripod thing printed out, and we'll see if uh, it all assembles together in the end. But if you want to see the rest of the PETG carbon fiber print and that tripod build, you're going to have to stick around and watch the next video. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. And if you enjoyed today's video, hit the thumbs up so YouTube knows this is what you like seeing. Until next time, folks, take care, and I hope everybody has a successful week.